Hey everyone from around the world, it's me, Jeremy Alexander Newsom here on Outback Mountain in Keystone, Colorado with my boy Josh Berry back there on the camera. Who's about to bomb this hill right here on his, on his skis, shred some mad powder. The video's not gonna do it justice, but uh, these three hooligans over here about to get it shredded as well. Hey, what's going on? It's gonna be amazing. And uh, yeah, love life, live life, and trade it. You guys rock, see ya. Hey traders from around the world, what's going on? It's me, Jeremy Alexander Newsom with Real Life Trading Dot Cam. Hope everyone's doing phenomenal. We got the SPY today and a pretty much non-event, if you will. Um, SPY closing down 33 cents from Friday's close, uh, which makes a lot of sense, honestly, about 33 of them, because this was a retest gap. And if we hop in here to the hourly chart, you can almost see a very clear and obvious kind of a one, two, three wave count. Uh, this would be potentially some type of four. So here we go, uh, hourly chart, one, two, three, some kind of wave four, and then a five. I think that's exactly what SPY is gonna do, uh, more than likely. So tomorrow we either have a rest or a little bit more of a down day or some kind of pullback, but um, eventually I'm, I'm expecting SPY to continue just a little bit higher. So uh, this 283.46, this is a bear call spread unravel exit price. I have an iron condor on the spy right now, and uh, the bull put spread is gonna be fine. It was at 239, 238, so we're gonna be just okay on that one. Not a problem. Uh, the bear call spread, we'll see. I mean, it's April, it's very far away. Obviously, I would prefer for it to trade sideways, but if some point this week we get a close above 280.53, I'm probably just going to unravel that spread, hold on to the 285 calls, uh, get in, uh, buy back my bull put spread, get into another bull put spread, and buy some shorter term calls on the spy. So we'll see what happens. Here's the IWM, and again, talked about this one last week, making a new uh, higher high and higher low today. Here's Nvidia also trading to my target. Uh, this is the previous resistance right cheer. Right, and uh, this bounce was just off of the 50 exponential moving average, and the stop was below some of the wicks and movement from over here. So this was the exact setup, the exact analysis as it stands, and the target was just right there at the previous all-time high. So nice little area. Uh, Nvidia did make a new all-time high move today. Speaking of new all-time highs, it's your boy Apple ticker symbol AAPL with a new all-time high of 182.39. A lot of real-life traders taking advantage of this one. Uh, this was the analysis that I posted today in the morning day trading room. And this one have actually would have worked two times, uh, 181.17 by 180.57. And if you took that as we were pulling back, uh, that was an R right there. And the exact same trade would have worked a second time for another R on Apple. So really nice little bullish retest gap, right? That's why you would look to have played the retest on that one. But uh, Apple right now, you have, let's see, Three white candles in a row. I know, I know it's only Monday, but you can see the blue lines. I talked about that some on Friday, the pink and blue lines where we anticipated to buy the dip on Apple. That did happen, that played out very nicely. Ray's got a put sale at 170. Victor had a put sale at 160. The trend is without question bullish, making a new all-time high. So bottom line is, if you get another pullback on Apple uh, sometime this week or next week, buy the dip and continue being bullish and owning Apple as long as you can. We'll definitely hit 200 this year. Let's go look at Goldman Sachs, circa symbol GS. Goldman Sachs also making a new all-time high. Here's the weekly chart. And uh, again, we're just, I mean, the trend is bullish. So I wouldn't be taking breakouts by any means on most of these stocks. I'll be looking at uh, buying a dip as most of the market has already had some very good pullbacks you know, last week and the week before, hashtag buy the salsa. Um, but anyway, Goldman Sachs having a nice close today. In fact, the close of today on Goldman Sachs was the highest that it's ever had. Here's what that looks like. So just barely, barely getting up there, but it is closing higher than it's ever closed before. So again, Goldman Sachs uh, would also be a dip buying opportunity, preferably somewhere around 268 if it pulls back that far. And of course, if it makes a new all time high, 276, 277, sometime tomorrow or the next day. Just kind of buy the dip into there. Amazon uh, making another all time high today. Just a powerhouse. 1605, 33. I know my good buddy Jesse James Levan and some calls on that one. 
I don't know if you closed those calls today or not, but Amazon just tearing up the charts. And again, this was the last dip buying opportunity right there off of the 10 and the 20 on Amazon. So for now, just find out where your targets are and look to sell there. Here's Tesla up 5% today. Very weird that it bounced here. I don't think that anyone could have thought, imagined, predicted, or charted that Tesla would have slowed down and potentially bounced around this increasing higher low here on the chart. Uh, if you put the long-term moving averages on, you'll notice we closed above both the 100 and 200. So very similar to last time, right? If it pulls back into these levels and you want to buy the dip on Tesla, awesome. And next target, probably about mid uh, low 360s. And this one will just slowly keep grinding and consolidating. Bullish to neutral, very good for some bull put spreads and some put sales. I do have a wager with a good friend of mine, real life trader Efren up there on Tesla. Um, a little bit of a lower high trend, kind of coming in potentially right about there. So again, the next move, we really could be a perfect move up into about th the mid 360s. And then from there, we probably pause. So again, if you're looking at playing Tesla for right now, at least in my opinion, still more bullish to neutral. Did have a few other requests today. Um, let me get those pulled up really quick. I'm trying to memorize all of them, but let's see. Ah, uh, yes, Macy's and Google. So here's Macy's. This is the weekly chart on Macy's and it just smacked its beautiful head right against the 100 simple on a weekly chart. That was a big deal. Here's the daily time frame and the daily time frame. It's above its long-term moving averages. Um, it's a nice retest gap, good looking trends. And so again, this is Macy's. Realistically, if it kind of pulls back into this gap, it had a nice retest gap on earnings. So if it pulls back to 27.38, that's probably where I would look to be buying it. But just because of that weekly 100, mm, might wait on Macy's just a little bit because this stock does like to respect its long-term averages, as you can see. So let Macy's trade sideways a little bit longer, and if and when she can really break out of that 2961 level, that should be pretty nice. Uh, Christian requested Google, G-O-O-G-L, and this is the daily chart on Google. So Google just bouncing off of that 100 simple moving average, very, very nice move. And it's already gone 100 points or 10% realistically from, uh, from March the 2nd. So the month of March, this thing has been tearing it up. So you had that bounce off the 200, rotationally bounced again, um, pull back and then bounce again. Probably what would likely happen on Google. A lot of stocks out there looking to form what appears to be some kind of ugly form of a double bottom. So a little bit of a rest today. Wouldn't be surprised if we have one more pullback tomorrow. I'll be looking at buying that dip. But then again, if tomorrow is just absolutely solidly bullish, not really afraid of that at all as well because we did have a rest today. But Google, really nice double bottom and I'd probably be looking at buying it around 1140. Next target on Google is 1240, probably by mid-April is when we will likely hit that. And I think I have one more, which is a stock on the London Stock Exchange, actually three more. Um, Just Eat on the London Stock Exchange. Just Eat. Here's the LSE and there it is. All right, so here's the daily chart and this stock did have a pretty decent gap down. Pretty expensive stock actually, um, and it traded right down to the 200 simple. The reason I'm bringing up its cost is because this is almost a perfect tweezer bottom and this is almost undoubtedly a flag pattern with some good volume coming in today. I really like these two bullish candles. So if Just Eat decides to make some higher highs sometime tomorrow or the next day, uh, specifically tomorrow, I think the trend looks good. I mean, it did have a bearish gap and it did play out, but it looks like from here it's going to bounce off the 200 simple and continue its overall pretty decently healthy trend since it had an IPO back in 2014. Uh, big resistance here, broke out, big resistance broke out. So yep, trend is your friends, look solid, let's ride. Next on the list we had PES that was requested and PES Pioneer Energy Services uh, here's the weekly chart. It's pretty much undoubtedly sideways. So we've been at this price for a long time. And so we want to play this one more sideways than not. Here's the daily chart. And the daily chart looks like it's going to try to kind of break out of here. Here's your exponential moving averages. 
So if I was looking at playing Pioneer Energy, um, I would wait for, well really today's candle did close above or at that resistance. So if it moves higher tomorrow, which is Tuesday, since it's a sideways stock, I'd look to buy it as low as possible. So I'd probably set a 305 limit buy. Hopefully it bounces with a stop either at 250 or 265. But based on the long-term moving average on the daily, looks nice, but the long-term day on the weekly is at 350. So even though you can see it did break through it a little bit last time, it's obviously some kind of cool point of contention here on Pioneer Energy Services. And last but not least, here's SIFY. And again, this is the weekly chart. So the weekly chart had a nice little breakout over the last few weeks. We finally got above some support resistances. So you're above the long terms on the 100, 200. You're above the daily on the, uh, the weeklies on the long term. And we're just kind of trading sideways right now. Some good volume came in last three or four days. So on SIFY Technologies, you'll also notice a pretty decent resistance right about there. And you also have a little bit of a resistance from that wick right here. And this is the wick that I'm looking at. So what I'm gonna keep my eyes on on SIFY is probably a close above this resistance. I'm gonna buy the dip at about 207 and then hopefully a nice little pop into about 280. So uh, feel free to keep your eye on this one. Volume is a little bit on the lighter side. So definitely no options on this particular stock, but hey, it's a little bit of a cheaper one. I'm sure you all know how to play it. Keep those risks, keep those stops in place, and trade like a champion. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be leaving New York City tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. back in Nash, Vegas. And I'll be back in Nashville for the next few weeks until we have our real-life trading meet up in Miami. And then, of course, our cruise from Miami to Jamaica in April. Folks from around the world, thanks so much for tuning in. You are amazing. And until next time, love life, live life, and trade it. Bye.